Hey guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy a Django web application on Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. All right, so for you to be able to do that from the terminal, you want to have two things installed. The first thing is the AWS command line interface. And the second thing is the Elastic Beanstalk command line interface. All right, so before you go ahead and download AWS CLI, you can check if you already have it and you can do that by opening your terminal and then running the command aws space dash dash version and you will see here that i do have it installed that's the version of the aws command line interface and for the elastic beanstalk command line interface you can do eb dash dash version and if you if it'll give you something then um, then that means you already have it now most likely you don't have the Elastic Beanstalk command line interface unless you, you used Elastic Beanstalk but if you've worked with AWS then maybe you already have the AWS CLI. In the next few seconds I'm going to show you how you can install both of them if you need to. Alright so if you need to download and install the AWS command line interface you can start by googling install AWS CLI and you can click on the first link here and if you scroll down you will see that uh, you can pick your operating system it will be Mac for me and um, if you scroll down more you will see that there is this file um, the, the package, the Mac package that uh, you can download and once you download it you can just run it and that will simply install the AWS CLI. Now for the Elastic Beanstalk command line interface, you can do the same thing. You can start by Googling install EB CLI and you can click on the first link here and you can click on manually install the Elastic Beanstalk CLI and if you scroll down, you can see this option for Mac OS and for me, I did use Homebrew to install uh, the EBCLI. So, so you do want to update the, the homebrew. You can just install AWS CLI. And again, it'll tell you the version by doing this command. All right, now that we have both the AWS CLI and the EBCLI installed, um, we're going to start by creating a virtual environment, a Python virtual environment. And then uh, I'm going to install Django on it. And then I'm going to create a Django project using that virtual environment. And then I'm going to do a few other things and then I'm going to deploy that Django project. So let me go to a place where I can create my virtual environment. Let me go to my Dropbox, for example, and let me create a new folder. I'm going to say YouTube uh, Elastic Beanstalk. I'm going to go inside that folder. And here I'm going to create a virtual environment, a Python virtual environment. I can do that by typing Python. Let me use 3.8, m for module. Then I can do venv. And then I can give uh, my virtual environment the, the name my venv. All right, that'll take a few seconds. And if you list, you will see that I do have this folder, which is really my uh, Python virtual environment. I can activate this one by doing source my vnv bin activate. So that's how you activate the virtual environment. And you can see here that it's activated. And I can show you that it's activated by doing which Python. You can see here that the command Python is pointing at the Python file inside my virtual environment. Um, so let me install Django. I can do that by doing pip install Django, like that. All right, so Django has been installed. Right now I can create a Django project by doing Django admin start project. And then I can give it the name, um, maybe EB Django. So let me do that, EB Django. All right, so right now if you list here, you can see here that I have both my virtual environment and my Django project folder. All right, guys, so I have my PyCharm open and I opened the same folder that I created earlier, which is the folder that contains both 
my virtual environment and my Django project. And what I'm going to do first is I'd like to activate the virtual environment here using this PyCharm terminal. So I'm going to do source. I'm currently here, by the way. So if I do pwd, you see that I'm inside this folder, which is really this folder. So from here, I can do source my vn bin activate. And that's going to activate this virtual environment. So if I do which Python, it'll tell me that the Python that we'll be using is the Python that's inside my virtual environment. All right, so now I want to go inside my Django project. So I can do that by doing cd space eb Django. So inside this, I'd like to create the requirements file. So the requirements is a text file that's going to contain all the packages that have been installed on the active virtual environment, which is really this one. So I can do that by typing pip freeze, and I can redirect the output to requirements.txt like that. And if you do that, you will see that a file will be created. Here is the file, and if we open it, we'll see that these are the packages that have been installed on my virtual environment. So that's the first thing that we need to do. Um, after that, we need to create another folder inside EB Django. So it's going to be a folder next to this kind of inner folder. And the name of it will be .eb extensions. So here what we're doing, we're setting up the project so that we can deploy it to Elastic Beanstalk. So I'm, I'm going to right click here, go to directory, and I'm going to say dot, so it'll be hidden, eb extensions, like that. All right, so inside this new folder, I need to create another file. So I'm going to say new file, and I'm going to give it the name django.config. So django.config. Uh, and inside this file, I'm going to be pasting some text which I'm going to include in the description below and it looks like this. Um, so you want to keep everything the same except for this portion. So this portion needs to actually match the name of this folder which is really the name of your Django project. So in my case I did call it EB Django so I don't need to change it but for your case you want to make sure that this portion is the same thing as, again, the name of your project. And if we open this folder, we see that this is the file really that we're pointing at. So this portion is really pointing to this folder and this file. That's really all that you need to know. All right, so right now uh, I'm finished with configuring my project. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to create this Elastic Beanstalk application. And I need to use the Elastic Beanstalk command line interface, and I can do it here. Now, you don't have to have your virtual environment active now. Actually, you can just say, you know, deactivate. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to clear here. And the syntax for creating an Elastic Beanstalk application, of course, that's going to be on your AWS account. So that's going to be an application on the cloud. The syntax would be eb init, then dash p for Python, then you would say Python, dash 3.8 so don't forget this dash and then you can do space and then you can do app uh, eb django so that's the name of your application i want my application to be called app dash eb django it'll only take a few seconds all right now that we created the elastic beanstalk application let's create the virtual environment and we also want to do that on the cloud so right now we're doing the virtual environment on the cloud and we can do that by doing eb create, and that'll create the environment. And I'm going to give it the name env dash eb Django. So that might take a few seconds. All right, so it's finished now. It actually did take uh, at least uh, two, three minutes. And it says here successfully launched environment. So what we want to do here is we want to do eb status. And this will give us some information about uh, the application and the environment. Um, so what we want to do now is we want to get this, uh, where is that? 
this C name and we want to add it to our settings file, to our Django settings file. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to my settings file, which is here. And inside allowed hosts, I'm going to add this like this as a string. And that's really it. Um, now, after we do that, we want to deploy. So we can deploy by doing eb deploy. And that will actually take all of the stuff that are here. And all of that will be deployed to my Elastic Beanstalk application. So let's try that. I think that will also take a minute or two. All right, it's finished. Now to test it, you can actually go to this URL. Another way of going to this uh, website would be to type eb open. And that will open the site. All right, the site opened actually in my other screen. So let me move it and show it to you. All right, so you can see here it's been successfully deployed. And this is just an, an empty project for now. All right, so before we actually end this video, I want to uh, talk about a few more things about Elastic Beanstalk. They're actually very important. So I just logged into my AWS account and I just went to the Elastic Beanstalk service. And as you can see here, we have two applications, one that I, that I use for another project and the one that we just installed or rather deployed, which is here. So env Django, env eb Django is the environment and the application is app eb Django. And um, if we click on the environment, uh, you can actually um, access many things. So you can access the logs, which are very useful. You can uh, do some monitoring. You can check the health. And you can look at the configuration of your project. Now, Elastic Beanstalk um, is actually not a resource. So you don't really get charged for Elastic Beanstalk. What they refer to it by is something called orchestration service. So it's a service that uses other resources and you'll be actually paying for the other resources that your application uses. So it's important to know what kind of resources an Elastic Beanstalk application use, because uh, based on those resources, you can calculate how much you're gonna end up uh, paying. All right, so let's go to the configuration here. And um, the, the most, or there are actually two important things that you're going to be charged for. The first one is the EC2 instance where your website is going to be hosted. So that's going to be displayed here. So in the capacity here, you see that the, uh, the instance type is T2 micro. So you can check how much uh, you're going to be charged for that. It, it'll really depend on the region, but I think you'll be charged roughly maybe seven dollars let's check the pricing together so i'm going to google um, pricing ec2 instance pricing all right so um so the instance type is east t2 micro so i'm going to look for t2 micro um, and depending on the region so for example for this one it's going to cost you this much per hour so if you go to california I think it'll probably cost you more. I'm not sure we can check really quickly. Uh, here's California. Yes, it'll cost you. So this one is 138. Um, Ohio is 116. Yeah, so it'll be a little bit more expensive if you pick the California region. And of course, you can take this one and you can multiply it by 24 by 30. And that'll tell you how much you're going to end up uh, paying per month. So that'll be uh, a little over $8 per month. All right, so that's the first um, resource that you're gonna be charged for. All right, so the other resource that you're gonna be charged for is the load balancer or lo load balancing resource. Um, so this one, I'm gonna actually show you another tab here, which shows you the pricing of this. Um, all right, so the, the load balancer that will be used in Elastic Beanstalk is going to be the classic load balancer and you'll be charged this amount per hour so if we were to take this one 
multiplied by 24 multiplied by 30, you'll end up with exactly $18. So $18 plus maybe $8, so it'll be 26. And of course, this is assuming that you don't have kind of too much traffic. So if you want to know exactly how much you'll be charged for, or if you want to come up with a better estimate, maybe you want to look at those examples. And there's a calculator here that you can uh, use. But really, if your website doesn't have a lot of traffic, most likely you're going to end up paying this amount, um, of course, per hour. So these are really the two resources that you're going to um, end up paying money for. Now, I should say that there is a way to actually disable the load balancing. And maybe I can show you how to do that in another video. But by default, this uh, load balancing will be enabled. And the instance type that will be used to host your website is going to be the T2 micro. All right, so one last comment before we end this video. Um, if you want to delete your application, it's very important that you do it from the Elastic Beanstalk uh, service. So you don't want to go to EC2 and delete this T2 micro. You can do that, but as soon as you delete it, another T2 uh, micro instance will be spun up and, uh, and will be used for the, for the application, for the Elastic Beanstalk application. So if you want to uh, stop being charged for your application, what you probably want to do is you want to click here and you want to go to action and delete application. So I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, feel free to write your question in the comments below and have a good one. I will see you in the next one.